look local. It's the B Plus Wrestling Podcast. You the moves. You might not be an A, but you are a B Plus. Check it out. Alright, ladies, gents, and non-binary friends, welcome to another B Plus podcast. I am your host, Greg Does Things, and I'm going to do the thing where I talk about all the things going on in the world of professional wrestling this week. Joining me, of course, all the way over in Perth, our our workhorse here at the B Plus, the news gatherer, if you will, Mr. Mysterious. How you doing, buddy? Hey, what's up? Hello. Haven't seen you when you walked in the door because we're on the podcast. I heard that song today. It's stuck in my head. But no, I'm going well. Um, looking forward to the long weekend and uh, just, yeah, we've got a few things to talk about. So I'm actually pretty excited. Yeah, I, uh, I, w- I'm not sure what that reference was, but that Hey What's Up Hello just reminded me of uh, Britta's shirtless boyfriend in Community. Yeah, you don't remember Trap Queen? Trap Queen? Trap Queen. Track Queen. Trap. T-R-A-P. Trap. That's what I said the first time, and then you corrected me. What the <laughs> fuck's Trap Queen? Uh, that's right. It's just an old song that I haven't heard in a while. That's why I thought it'd be clever, but clearly it didn't go through. If I have to explain it... Many of the refs. If I have to explain it... Do you it, know what the fuck he's talking about? No, there's, the reference has gone over my head too. And how God about this che- cheeky, mysterious here, WA getting the uh, a long weekend. I think it's only WA and ACT get um, get the Monday off. Really? Yeah, I thought you it was said you guys it's been a long weekend, and I was like, "What the? What's a what?" I thought it was, <laughs> I was just, like, I thought it was everywhere, guys. No, just you, just two states. Ah, oh, lucky yeah. mouth. Yeah. yeah, I'm working yeah, no, tomorrow no and idea. Sunday. I haven't had a day off since Easter Sunday. You know, you're um, working on the holiest of holies uh, of the of the state sanctioned, you know, statist religious holidays. Yeah, they wanted us to not work in the morning, which is the normal shift on weekends. It's like, we've got to show respect, so we're going to work at 1 o'clock in the afternoon through to 7, and everyone's right. like, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> and So they're allowing <laughs> people to six-hour shift, so some people chose to start go from 6 a.m. to 12. I'm working 9 to 3. So, But then I'm, our- I'm working 6 a.m. Sunday, though, for six hours. For our many listeners in the UK and America and Iran – uh, who who don't know what we're talking about. The holiest of holies here is Anzac Day. So that's, of course, the day we honor our troops. It's akin to American Veterans Day, I guess. Yeah. Or Memorial Day. Is that, is that a thing? They have a Memorial Day, right? I'm sure they do, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's the day where we uh, where we celebrate the, uh, the young men that get sent to die and also kill uh, <laughs> on behalf of the rich people who run the place. Uh, hopefully uh, you're checking the complaint box tomorrow. <laughs> well, look, our, sh- our shit's getting removed from YouTube automatically. Thanks a lot, Susan. Coronavirus, coronavirus, oh, there conspiracy you go. theory, tinfoil hat. Like, what the fuck? Another anyway. one. It's the one that any episode gets onto YouTube every time you say con- uh, conspiracy theory. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I am illegal, apparently. I'm not, not an approved thinker. So, you know... <laughs> whatever it doesn't it's not gonna stop me we're moving to video people it's gonna happen i don't know when i don't know when but we're working on it we're working on it i'm just too anal about it like i can't like unless i unless i get it perfect it's not gonna happen but we're working on it we're working have, towards have, a, video. have a trial run and if it looks like shit then maybe at least people can enjoy that yeah well we've, we've i've done a trial run before but like not put it out if it uh, looks like shit i'm not gonna put it out yeah that's the thing yeah um, so I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out, uh, but I'm, you know, we're working on it. Well, that's all I'll say. So stay tuned. We'll get a uh, producer to work on it for us. <laughs> I can't afford that shit. What about our intern? We were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. Intern. Yeah. If anyone wants to be an intern <laughs> and do all the work for us, <laughs> hit me up. Uh, no, if anyone wants to buy us some expensive video equipment so that we can, you know, uh, look ugly in high definition. Speak to yourself, mate. Yeah, speak, (laughs) jeez. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, we actually have Australian wrestling news this week, which is, that's something. Like, we haven't actually had Australian wrestling news in in weeks. Yeah, like, you have, like, the 
the Aussie boys, they had their Raw debuts a couple weeks ago, like Brendan Vink and... Um, that's still WWE news, yeah, though. Yeah, like, like, indie, and I was talk about indie. That's, that's, we use that as the transition into WWE news because it's, yeah. it's WWE news. Yeah. yeah, but aside from that, no, you're right. We've kind of... Um, the whole country's been really quiet until now. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, the Australians, just speaking of WWE, the Australians that are over there, uh, no one got sent home, which is nice. Yes. That we know of. No one no one was uh, released. So none of our Aussies were released. So that's good uh, in the massive cuts that happened that we ranted about last week. You can go back and listen to that in the archive. But no, this week we actually have Australian wrestling news. So as we were recording, was it on the day we were recording or the day after we recorded? I don't remember. But... Uh, Coliseum was announced as part of one of the PWA Twitch streams. Now, PWA are doing fantastic work. They're keeping up their uh, their live schedule, kind of, in a way. Uh, they can't go out and wrestle, so instead they're doing uh, weekly video game streams where they're playing Smash Brothers and stuff like that on, on Twitch, but they are also doing watch-alongs. So there's one happening right now as we speak. I've got it playing in the background. It's muted. You can't hear it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, so basically they're watching old PWA pay-per-views. And when I say old, like some of them are pretty recent, like Matty Wahlberg and Ugg watched their, you know, infamous match. Infamous? It's not infamous. Why did I say infamous? They watched their match from last year. Yeah. And, uh, and last week during the live stream with Bonza and Moretti watching their Coliseum final back, which was brilliant. I don't know if they archive the footage. If they do, go and watch it. Because just hearing Bonza and Moretti talk about things is, you know, I could listen to Bonza talk for, for days. But yeah, they're doing the live streams. And as part of the live stream last week, they announced Coliseum 2020. It's happening, hopefully, in October. October is a long time away. Do, uh, how are we feeling? Are we confident October? Australian wrestling in general could be back? It's good to make plans now. I, I, I'm i sure everyone's hoping at least till the end of the year, like October, November. So e- even like most places, the end of year shows are either at the start or at like around like October, November. So, I mean, they had the countdown there for this announcement well before yeah. any of the COVID stuff happened. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's smart for them to go ahead with it because you started a countdown, you got to pay it off. Um. I mean, they could have switched it out for something else and no one would have known any better, but, you know, it, it, it's good to, to see them, you know, stick to it. And I think we're going to be okay. I don't know if interstate travel is going to be happening. I'm, I'm hoping yeah. by then the interstate travel will be happening, um, especially given their first announcement, which we'll get to in a second. But uh, I'm worried that interstate travel won't be happening just because New South Wales have more cases the New South Wales and Victoria have more cases than pretty much anywhere else, right? Yeah, we're all done, yeah, fellas. So, Come on. Yeah. Um, well, well, I mean, they're, us, us three, they're, we're all doing good, aren't we? Yeah, we're, we're in the good states. <laughs> yeah. Or Northern Territory is even better. You you guys had an outbreak down there in Tasmania. Is that near you? Oh, a little yeah, cluster. An hour, an hour and a half away drive, yeah. Yeah, from, anyway. from people having an illegal dinner party. Can you believe that's a phrase that we have to say in 2020? <laughs> mm-hmm. An illegal dinner party holy shit with george orwell would would be shocked anyway um it's yeah i'm i'm worried about interstate travel but i think the event will happen mm-hmm. whether i will be able to go to it or mysterious or yourself i don't know i hope so oh uh, what date in october uh yeah what was the actual date of that did you say because maybe i should go and we could all actually meet up that would be good i don't think they announced a, a, an actual date did they? Mysterious? Uh, I think it's on like the 18th. I'm actually just double checking now, so I don't. It was on the 18th last year. Yeah, I know that. Was that the double weekend? 16th to 17th. Yeah, 16th, 16th and 17th. Yeah. So it's a two dayer again, not a three dayer, which we'd hoped for a three dayer. But you know, hopefully they'll get there at some point. But a two dayer, we can assume that hopefully they'll have another fan fest. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, it, it Coliseum is huge. It's a massive event. It's amazing. And the cool thing is, and I'm saying this as the Aussie wrestling guy, the, the, the cool thing is international travel will definitely not be happening in, in October. Yeah. That's not happening. So as great as it would be to see Rusev, for example, in the Coliseum, or Rusev versus Jack Bonza, which I know Bonza's tweeted about it, like, give me, give me Rusev. But uh, I think it's going to be great to see it be just Australians. You know? I'm very excited for that to see another year of just Australians. Because last year, of course, we had Orange Cassidy. Uh, we did have... Travis Banks. Uh, 
Travis Banks. Yeah, thank you. We had Travis Banks as well. And I wanted to see Darby Allen this year. That was my pick. I wanted Darby Allen mm. in this. But, you know, I think it's great to see it be just Australians. And we got our first talent announcement for the Coliseum. And I love the video. They had all the COVID clips in there with ScoMo and his little quotes and all that. It's very of the times and I love it. So entering, oh, we should say it's not just Coliseum. It's Coliseum the Thunderdome. Yes. And entering the Thunderdome, the first competitor, Royce motherfucking Chambers. Holy shit. They could not have picked a better name to start with. What a guy. Love it. He had, like, when we saw him at last year's Coliseum, like, he had one of his best matches there, and he's, his star's been on the rise for quite a while now, so if if not now, when, it would, yeah. <laughs> It was his PWA debut at the Coliseum, and yeah. obviously he impressed the right people. Uh, so he's been he's been asked back to be a part of the tournament. Couldn't be happier for the dude. We've had him on the show before. Uh, he's a he's a great dude, and uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing him compete in a Coliseum bout uh, personally in October. Who who else would you guys uh, sign up for the Coliseum for for this year? How many people are in it? Is this an eight man, eight person tournament? Eight, eight yeah. person eight, tournament. Eight person tournament. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's it's hard. Like, do we are we thinking like maybe uh, like one person representing each state maybe to make it that little bit more special? Well, last time around they did pick veterans yeah. from other states. So you had Chris Basso uh, head up from Adelaide here. Uh, obviously, uh, Davis Storm, a, leg- a legend in the sport, a uh, Davis Storm from over there where you are. I wouldn't be surprised to see Gavin McGavin make his way over this time around. Hmm. It is a grapple fuck tournament at its heart. Yeah. Right. And they went away from that a little last year. Not fully, but a little. They did go away from it. But I'd, I'd like to see it return to its grapple fuck roots, even though you got Royce Chambers as the first one in there. But the whole idea was the best grapplers. So I would like to see Gavin McGavin. My pick, if we're going one from each state from Adelaide, I want to see Tommy Knight. Yes. A, a lot of people would say Rat Daddy, and I love no. Rat Daddy. But Tommy Knight has that legitimate, you know, MMA style background. He's a big bruiser, big bopper. Would love to see Tommy Knight uh, uh, get the get the nod. We got Royce Chambers already from Melbourne. Liam Lacey uh, from TCW. <laughs> Liam Lacey. Sure. We'll throw in a TCW guy. Why not? Yeah. I I would go with. Uh, let's see. Can we think of anyone from from Queensland who who might? I'd go. Uh, be a good Zeke I'd go Xander. Xander. I would love to see Xander Sullivan. Zeke Andino is good, but Xander Sullivan, he that's my dude right there. Uh, and he had an amazing match with Mick Moretti already. So we know we know they know who he is at least. Well, Moretti knows who he is. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd be looking at the Australian Wrestling League guys for sure. Uh, Mitch McCarthy, maybe? Yeah, Smash Mouth. Why not? Uh, yeah, you- just to be different from you, but, but Xander would be my guy. Do you think they'll get uh, someone from last year's tournament as well? Like, will we see Jessica back in there? Will we see um, Rick South? I want to see Ricky South. I want to see Ricky South be uh, the guy who has competed in three but not managed to win one. I want to see him get to the final this year, though. Yeah. Cause, like, who does he lose to in the final? That's the question. That's that's tough. Of course. Like, it, do you want him in there in the in the tournament, or do you want him to face Ugg when they have? coliseum so it's, it's a hard one well that depends that depends on when they come back to live shows if they're able to start live shows before coliseum mm. ricky south will presumably have his title match already yeah um if if that is the first show part of me is thinking that will be the first show so like if i'm going on that mindset i feel like he'd be set for that world title picture but yeah, I, to have like three consecutive appearances, I think you made a star out of him already and it was his time before the pandemic. So I reckon Jess would be great to see back in there or uh, even even Sam Osborne, like get him to advance to the semis at least. Yeah, I know the only person that I would put in there that's already competed would be Ricky South just because he's competed in two okay, and hasn't made it. What about one of the prefects? Throw one of the prefects in there. Oh, Big Fudge, dude. Big Big Fudge is undefeated in 2020. Yes, that's right. The streak's still going. Even Yeah. yeah. It, it works for him. <laughs> God. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if the plan... Like, when he got the win, mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit, 
Fudge for Coliseum. 2020 is the year of Fudge. Fudge is going to go undefeated. I didn't know that I was predicting the future thanks to this COVID-19 thing. He's still undefeated because there hasn't been matches. <laughs> but I'm into it. He can make a, a solid case. Yeah. Uh, but I'd also like to see him just like defend the commissionership of sanitation. If someone was to step up and be like, you're the reason <laughs> for COVID-19. Like Sam, Sam Osborne, challenge him for who's going to be the new commissioner of sanitation, right? Yeah. Because if we had proper sanitation, we would have been able to keep running, but we had to shut down. So I'd like to see that match happen. <laughs> like that's, that's my dream scenario. Just dickhead heel Sam Osborne, just completely just blaming fudge for COVID-19. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. I love it. That's a great heel move. Uh, no, uh, Tree Hugger Lucci. He'd be a great pick as well, yeah. That's my dude. That's my pick to, oh, maybe not to win it. I don't know. Maybe just Troy. I don't know. There's so much good talent in PWA, man. Yeah. Have you watched PWA yet, Ben? No. Don't be silly. What <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you? <clears throat> you need to get onto it, Ben. I'm busy watching all these um black and white Mexican horror movies, mate. You're fired. <laughs> <laughs> not another one. I'll get well, there anyway. <laughs> you got to watch some PWA, man. Maybe then you um, would actually understand what the shit yeah. we're talking about. These names sound familiar, but uh, I wouldn't know him from Barrett's side. <laughs> anyway, um, and we did touch on as well, the other Aussie news is uh, Indy Hartwell, I guess, made her, her debut, right? Yeah, against uh, Shayna. Good old Shayna. Yeah, how did that go? Because I don't watch. <laughs> no. Because it's awful. Shane is getting a groove back after losing in WrestleMania to Becky Lynch, which I still don't understand. So, yeah, she's going through the rest of the roster at the moment. So, that includes. So, Indy was there as a jobber. Did she get some shine at least? She got some shine. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, I, I may start watching WWE again, though. Yeah. Oh, God. I what did. You... Why? I did read today Vince McMahon said that they may make more mini movies in the future. Yeah, that seems to be the thing they're going for. Just saying that taking uh, advantage of the current climate, I think, was the official statement. I was yeah. going to go back and watch another old WWE pay view yesterday, but they decided they're not doing the uh, the free network thing anymore, where you can go and watch the old stuff. So that didn't last very long. Now everything's locked again. Yeah, they hooked you in, man. So. What's that? Sorry, they hooked you in. Now you got to pay for it. No, yeah. no, that ain't happening. <laughs> you got to give them them shackles, bud. I wanted to go. I want to watch um, WWF in your house, Canadian Stampede. That one. What about you know they're still making Saudi Arabia money this year, even though they're not going. Isn't that nice? Really mm. good for the, apparently. That's what I I saw the headline. I didn't click the article because I was like, I don't care about any of this shit. <laughs> I know I should because I'm here talking about it on a on a microphone, but. Uh, no, but WWE have said, or Vince McMahon has said now, that they, they're they probably not going to be in the live event business anymore. What do you make of that? It's hard. Like They've got their tapings as well, where it's like one week on, one week off. Uh, it'd be safer if that's the step going forward, because they're clearly not going to take a break anytime soon. But he's saying he doesn't know, even once the COVID-19 thing is over, mm. he doesn't know if you can go back to filling a 50,000-seat arena after all this. Which, to me, I figured people are going to be hungry to go to things. Yeah. but uh, People could also be nervous. <clears throat> like, just watching movies where people shake hands and stuff, I'm like, oh, like the instant reaction is, hey, no, what are you touching? It's like, oh, it's a movie. You know, when this is all over, just going back to normal life is it's going to be a bit weird. I don't know yeah, how don't long know. the wind's like going to be. I'm a cuddler, right? And so, like, for me, it's weird seeing people and not shaking hands. Mm. Yeah. Or not. Like, I, I went to I went to a computer shop yesterday. And in a small computer shop like that, normally you'd go up to the sales guy, you'd shake his hand. Hey, man, how you doing? I'm blah, blah. I'm here for this, that, that, blah, blah, Right? Like, because he wasn't behind a counter or nothing. He's just sort of there. You know, looking through the parts. And he jumped, he <laughs> jumped like, back, did he? He was like, oh, could he don't, don't come no, back. No, I didn't, I didn't go for the handshake, but it was weird not to. I felt weird. That's just how you greet people. Wait, you... What? Is this somebody you know? What? You just go into the, you go into a retail store and just shake somebody's hand and start talking to them about whatever you're going to buy. Is that what you do? In a certain context, Yeah. Not in like a JB Hi-Fi, but in a small business <laughs> you're building relationships. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that makes a little bit more sense for the. 
No, this is like a small, like a local run computer shop. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You, you don't walk into right? Woolies and it's like you know, no. at the checkout and shake their head. Oh, how's it going? No, I do talk to the people. I do, like I do make you? conversation. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I suppose I take one headphone out and see if they've got anything to say. I don't have conversations with strangers. It's not fair. Do you have your headphones on at the checkout? No, I don't. I'll, I'll pull one out. And I'll, if, I will if, admit, I've had times where I've done that. Yeah, yeah. where I'm, I'm listening. And I'll to turn it down. And then but, if they, if they no, want to, if they want to talk to me, then I, then I'll talk back. But I, I don't typically engage in conversation with strangers. No, I'll absolutely have a child I'll ask them how their day's been. You know, how long till you get off? I'm that guy. Yeah. You know, because. Because when I worked retail, it's so mind numbing and people don't respect you. People don't look at you as a person in retail. They look at you as this thing that gives them what they want, (laughs) right? You're a happiness machine that produces the item that will make them happy. (laughs) Like that's all you are to them. And and so I like to treat them as people. Is that your experience as well, Mysterious? That's what they are. It's hard to. It's weird to. Do you work at a counter in your? I, I work in. I work in a counter. It's weird to kind of um, to condense it into simplify it into all of that. But just yeah, I'm feeling a little well, bit. How, of... how often? Yeah. How often do people ask you how you are? How? Because I know when I worked retail, when someone was like, "How are you today, man?" I was always like, "You are the best customer I've had this week." Like, because <laughs> it doesn't happen. I'll get the handful, but it's it's not uh it's not followed up. You'll get the how are you, but it's not followed up kind of thing where people actively want to know what you're feeling. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Like like they'll like the how you doing, man? Oh yeah, no, it's been a it's been a rough day. <laughs> you know, and they they they're already moved on to the next thing. So what I'm after is. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you would never actually say it's been a rough day as a person working customer service. You wouldn't do that. But I, I don't know. I, I I just like to treat people as people, you know. Nothing wrong with anyway, that. Anyway, yeah. it's weird to me to to not be shaking hands or, or hugging people that you know and stuff. That's weird to me, right? It's especially weird, like, I mean, I feel really bad for my kids. My kids haven't been able to play with their friends in over a month now. Hmm. You know, like she's FaceTiming her best friend from school and stuff. And it's it's just like, I see them together normally and they're like running around and hugging and playing and jumping and tackling each other and doing all the, you know, being kids. And they're not allowed to do that now. And it's like, what the, f- the fuck is wrong with the world? You know? Well, it's yeah. getting better here. It is getting better here. We only had seven like yesterday. Seven, seven cases th- yesterday. And then 13. Yeah, four the day before. Yeah. Something zero. like that. Really? Yeah. What? Zero. We had thirteen we, over over was, my end, yeah. Oh, oh zero okay. case. Oh, in in Western Australia, yeah, yeah. I don't know what the state statistics were. I've sort of st- sort of tried to distance myself from looking at it because it's it, it can be scary. Like I like to stay informed, but I also don't like to get anxiety. Yeah. You know, I look yeah. once a day just to get the what the daily update is, and then that's it. Then are you looking at the official site, like yeah. the the government? Yeah, 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 good stuff. Yeah. So anyway, um. They're not in the live event business anymore. So he's worried that people aren't going to be going out to live events. I thought it would be the opposite. I thought that business would boom once everything gets back to normal. But I don't know. He also said something to the effect of, I think the direct quote was, uh, I I don't want to speak for the country, Mm. but we're going to be fine. This was on the earnings call. Yeah, well, he's one of the advisors to the president, so... (laughs) Oh, right. So that's why he's put that in there because he is in official capacity now. Yes. So when he's saying we're going to be all right, he has to make sure he's differentiating. We're t- I'm talking about WWE right now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> not not the country because no. the country's probably fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not too good over there, is it? No. Okay. Ready? Tinfoil hat time, Susan. Oh, my God. Here we go. All right. No, no, no. Uh, this isn't really tinfoil hat. I just saw a, uh, an interesting meme. Uh, the other day i could call it an infographic that's where you would know if i was a conspiracy theorist is i'd say it was an infographic it was a meme uh but it was basically showing how uh, like the rise and fall of empires over time Mm -hmm. and all the major empires lasted like their peak era was roughly 200 years and we're pretty much at the end of what would be the 200 years for the american empire nice (laughs) yeah so so we're in the decline of the american empire what's next China? Is it China? It's the rise of the Chinese Empire, isn't it? Yeah, it is, isn't yeah. it? God damn it, why can't we have Rudd back? 
Yeah. Already. Yeah, I want my 800 bucks again. That'd be good. <laughs> that guy knew. That guy knew, man. What do you mean you want your 800 bucks again? Just tell him that, the, that you're, you're, you're struggling and you can you can uh, dip into your super for 10,000. Isn't that good enough? Yeah, I'm not struggling though. Not with all this work <laughs> I'm doing. Yeah, you guys have been been getting busier. But anyway, let's let's get back to the yeah, WWE. We've got lots of news, so we should um, jump through it. Yeah. Uh, Triple H has said that he thinks two-day mania should be the standard going forward. Uh, much better than an eight-hour extravaganza is two four-hour extravaganzas. And yes, I agree with him. Absolutely. <laughs> Shocking, right? Triple H understands the audience. Yeah, that, uh, no that news Wrestle here. Kingdom thing went all right. Let's, let's do that. <laughs> I actually think the WrestleMania experiment was better than the Wrestle Kingdom one. Wrestle Kingdom over two days, the way they do their matches, there's too many multi-man matches in the uh, undercard and it bums me out. That's true. And cool. again, WWE everything. WrestleMania this year, they could have cut some 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 shit as well, to be honest. But you know, I like two day mania. Yeah, they wouldn't have done two days if they didn't have the order, if they, you know, the situation. No, no, it was just the situation. But I think that if it if it moves us towards two day manias in the future, he likened it to going from concerts to festivals, running going from running a concert to running a festival, and claiming that WrestleMania is more of a festival now than a concert. And I think he's right. Absolutely. I think he's right. It's a matter because, of if they can shorten each night, though. Or what's stopping them from doing two two shows of eight hours or whatever nonsense? Oh, know? God. That'd be awful. Don't say Don't that do it's that. a good idea it, until it, they've it seen the it practice. No, but he was specifically saying it's better as two four-hour events than one eight-hour event. Yeah. What they say and what they do is different. Well, yeah, I know. He kind I of know. he kind of prefaced that like he feels that's what's going to happen eventually. So without yeah, kind of, he's saying when the old man dies, without, without <laughs> saying it, like saying it without saying it, essentially. Yeah, um, was, he also throat, throat, was he doing the throat slash move movement and like looking at <laughs> Vince at the same time? <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was on a podcast, I think. It was on the After the Bell. So yeah, uh, audio, audio, or does After the Bell do video? They probably do, right? I think they do both. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. Uh, WWE 2K video games cancelled. No 2K in 2021. Yeah. Well, Given the disaster sense. that was 2K20. Yeah. Good. Good. <laughs> Although, the memes are great. Yeah. You had, um... It's not good for the people that bought the game, though. That's the problem. No. I, I, Did I... you buy the game? Are you salty? Oh, no. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't bought a 2K game since... 14, I think, or well, whatever the the second wow. one on the PlayStation 4 era. Tell you what, I saw it at uh, EB Games the other day for like 20 bucks. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, that might be worth it. It might be worth it just to like, uh, so we're, we've, we've talked a few times about we're hoping to live stream, right? Like we're looking into live streaming and, and upgrading our technology so that we can join everyone else in 2020 and, and get on the live stream gimmick on, on Twitch or, or Facebook live or YouTube live, whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, well, maybe I could, maybe I could stream some WWE 2K20 just for the lols. Get some of those glitches in there. Have oh, some laughs. I want to get a green screen so I can have something funny behind me while we do the podcast. Eh, Did you not? see New Japan uh, making it so you can download for like you, the background of your conference call? You can have like the press conference walls that they have with the sponsorship you're more it. kidding for zoom i need yeah. to get that because i do my zoom classes in uni and i change the background all the time and so like i've been in <laughs> i've been in uh the you know tony stark's lab yeah i've been sitting in the iron throne um i was on an animal crossing island at one stage uh i was hanging out with joe exotic at the <laughs> gw zoo not in jail for a, for a solid God. week no not in jail <laughs> There's no pictures of him in jail. No, it was it was him at the GW Zoo with the tiger, and I was like in there with him, uh, old mate Joe. Yeah, I love those Zoom backgrounds. I need to get this this New Japan one, so I'm going to look that up. I think it's very telling going back to the 2K20. How uh, last week's NXT, you had Pete Dunn appear on the Titantron. He introduced Timothy Thatcher. He was wearing and like he, and he's saying like, "Oh, I'm sorry that I can't be there." And he was wearing the 2K19 uh, jacket. And like even he knew, like if he put the two K twenty jacket on when he was promoting, he would absolutely get like bombarded with people. Do it for the memes, Dunn. <laughs> Do it for the memes. So yeah, even it's the one thing you can say about twenty twenty in general is the, the memes have been good. Uh, at what cost, Greg? At what cost? 
<laughs> yeah, at the cost of the American Empire. Good thing overall. Anyway, uh, what's this about W? So you've got this thing here in the run sheet, and I have no idea what we're talking about here. Uh huh. Ah, uh, thank you. Ben's just sent me through that video call background. Awesome. I'm on it. That is now going to be my background. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> if we ever do get the live streaming gimmick up and running, we all have to have that as our background on the first episode. We need to have like the big table in front of us with the beers piled up. And it's, a, it's, a, it's a company mandate. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, uh, you've got this thing here. I don't know what this is. WWE forcing employees to work. So th- what? There was a... Um... There was an anonymous tip that got sent to a um, a, co- a commissioner in Orange County that uh, it, he only went by John. So just, yeah, nice and simple. So Cena. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> F- fill in the blanks. You can't see him. but I was, th- I was thinking it was Moxley. <laughs> but yeah, no, saying that uh, WWE are forcing their employees to work and that they, um, they don't feel comfortable speaking up to the higher up. So it's... The, the legitimacy of it is very questionable. Like WWE even made a statement saying it's not true that uh, the employees should feel safe to um, to go up the ladder and talk to people. But it's just a, is it true? Is it not? <laughs> go up the ladder. Go up the ladder. Money in the bank. Yeah. Nice. But they're just Indeed. saying that they can't maintain, but despite being sanitarily at washing the ring and everything else, they can't maintain social distancing. So it, that not, doesn't necessarily mean it's a uh, it's a wrestler. It could be someone who in charge of makeup. It could be yeah one of the referees. It could yeah. That's interesting. Definitely interesting. I still think it's Moxley. He's upset that Renee has to go to work. <laughs> oh, she's doing it from home though, isn't she? Yeah, no, she, I know she's she backstage, is. She's, yeah, he photo bombed it. Did we talk about that? Yeah. Him showing up on that? Yeah, okay, cool. We talked about that. Uh, yeah. No, did you see how they're cleaning their stuff though? Apparently, uh. And I don't know, this to me is weird because if this is true, why is this not being used across the entire country, if not the entire world? They go through a specific biochemical lab cleaning thing at the moment who come in and clean this, clean the performance center for them. And apparently they use a spray that kills the coronavirus on contact. Why is that not being sprayed at park? benches and why isn't it being sprayed on kids park equipment so my kids can go to the fucking playground like i never realized how much we go to the playground we go to the playground like three times a week Hmm. at least three times a week more than i take my kids (laughs) (laughs) so that's what you're doing wrong call back uh no (laughs) we go to the playground a lot because we love the playground i even get in there and jump on the little trampoline floor things and stuff Anyway, I, I don't know. Like, why isn't it being used everywhere if this is a thing that exists? It's hard to say. Maybe just supply. Like, maybe is it a, is it something that they have to order in from another country? And yeah, th- those are my two things. I'm like, either it's ridiculously expensive, and they're they're paying money out the wazoo, and that's why they had to fire people, or <laughs> or it's complete horseshit. They're full of shit. That's the other option, right? Those are the two options. I'll never give them the benefit the de- benefit of the doubt over anything like this. I, I just I just can't believe it. <laughs> you reckon they've got they've got poor John in there with alcohol wipes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherfuckers making me forcing me to come to work. You done there, John? No. It's a lot quicker than uh, changing the mat and the the ropes after every single match. I can tell you that. Yeah. Oh, but they're doing that as well. They're doing that as well, which yeah. is crazy. But you know, it's you know, you got to take the precautions. You got to take. Um, yeah, wait until they wrestle all over the bloody corporate building for money in the bank, and they have to get some big old building. Oh wow, that's I I love that announcement though. That they're they're gonna climb their way through the building and then go up to the roof. That's so is dope. the ring is on the roof is there any yes. rings throughout okay so what is the actual setup because i want the rings hear. on the roof and there's ladders there and they have to get to the roof and then climb the ladder so it's just gonna be like a backstage brawl on the lower floors then. what are the odds jeff hardy does a swanton bomb off the building <laughs> there's gonna be some monster trucks up there and Halloween i mean look they can off. film it they're filming it right so they can they can cut away <laughs> they can... it's already all been done isn't it most of it's has been, it like it there's Bit by bit, so maybe the whole match has been done or some of it, but they're slowly but surely they're getting through it. So wait, so they're doing live Raws and Smackdowns? 
live then taped and uh, throughout the week as well they've been visiting the the headquarters to actually film their bits seems like a lot of travel i don't know man i don't know i know he's weird and i'm so on the fence about so many things here um and and i think this is this is the time for us to talk about it because we've got uh ddp talking about you know his yoga studio in georgia staying close so he showed up on cnn with anderson cooper Mm. and uh was they, they were asking you know why are you staying closed even though and he was saying you know uh I think the whole world's going to change after this first off. Like that was one of his big points, but also he was saying that, you know, he's 64. His daughter has a, a, a young, you know, he has a young grandchild. Mm-hmm. And so for his health and their health and, you know, there are other elderly people that live with them. Like Jake was living there for a while. Right. Yeah. Um, he's like for the sake of these people, like he told Jake the snake. I saw that news article last week, but we didn't talk about it. He told Jake the snake, you know, if you're going to go to work, you can't stay here sort of thing. Um, which is his right. But anyway, he's basically said we've made a risk assessment for ourselves and it's too risky to be reopening and working with people. Oh, Good for you. Absolutely. Stay I thought closed. that he did a lot of that stuff online anyway, like video. Well, that was his other thing was he was like, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, the online portion of my business is huge, especially at the moment. And so I'm doing okay and I don't have to reopen my doors. So I'm not going to. Uh, for for my own safety and for the safety of everyone around us. And he talked about food safety and stuff as well. There's like a whole video on YouTube of him talking about food safety in the new world and stuff. DDP's great. I love DDP's content. I, I do DDP yoga. Yeah, it, I it's used fantastic. to do it. It's amazing. So, um, but yeah, they're staying closed. And and this is where I'm at with, like, where are you guys at with, with the whole situation? Like in, in America, there's the protesters, right? And oh, I've seen God. a lot of people just shaming the protesters and being like, your public enemy number one because you want to get back to work or did you, you know, see the video with to have the, freedom the sketch comedy actor guy tim robinson in it no no so there's all these people protesting i think it was in detroit and they're like oh we want to go and get our haircuts and blah 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 blah. and then it cuts to actor tim robinson so he must have just got in his car and drove down to the protest and they, they stick the camera on him and the microphone in his face and he starts yelling and he goes how am I meant to get my Halloween decorations? This is where I get my Halloween decorations. Oh, come on. <laughs> and, it's just, and that's included in this news clip. I'll have to send it to you. But fuck, it's funny. It's only a few seconds long, but <laughs> he's just like, must have seen this was happening. Drive down there and cause us. Oh, God. Fucking clown. <laughs> but no, like, everyone's been talking about them as if they're public enemy number one. And like, look, I wouldn't go to a protest right now. No, uh, like no, I said, no. I, no. I, I, pulled, I pulled my kid out of school before... It was before we were told to, and I stayed home before we were told to because I made that assessment for myself. I know my father's at risk. I would like to see my father from time to time. I haven't, even though I would. Li- I pulled out early so that we could. We, we've done the two weeks of staying at home and not having contact with anyone so that we could go see them. But you know, it's just too risky. It's too risky. And I've made that assessment for myself and for my family. Uh, my partner is still working. And when she gets home, clothes go straight in the wash, go straight in the shower, all the precautions, right? You know, you take the precautions, you make the risk assessment for yourself. And I think that's what these Americans are asking for. They're saying, we want to make the risk assessment for ourselves. We don't want, just because you have assessed the risk and said you don't want to go out in public doesn't mean you can stop everyone else from doing so. And I think that's a fair argument. Oh, they do whatever the fuck they like. It doesn't affect me. And then, the, the, like the dumb people, the dumb people who don't make the right risk assessment, they'll get sick and die, and then the world will be better. Eugenics, baby. <laughs> I don't know. I just I feel like when the alternative is in New Jersey now, they've got drones flying around, being like, "Turn around, go back inside, go back inside." You are gathering in more than two people. Go back inside. Hmm. And then if you don't, it takes your photo and you get a fine. Like, that's not the world I want to live in. I'd rather live in the world where there's stupid people who go outside and and risk themselves, but I'm still at home being safe and not risking myself. I'd rather live in the world where they're able to do that than the world where there's a drone. I think there should be a a middle ground. Somewhere in the (laughs) middle. Definitely be a middle ground, but yeah. there doesn't seem to be. No, and that's feel, the fucking trouble. Not picking one over the other, really. It's uh, it's it's very uncomfortable. But DDP, even though so Georgia is reopening. Georgia yes. has said gyms can reopen. 
but he's saying, I'm going to stay closed. And and it's just the perfect example of like, okay, if you give these people that are protesting what they want and you do reopen things, you don't have to go anywhere, Karen. Yep. You don't. No. <laughs> you there's nothing stopping you from staying home and like and i'm saying that to myself too like i'm karen here don't don't think because there's all there's also been all these tweets about karen is as bad as saying the n-word no it's not it's not no but i'm a karen here i would stay home even though things are like things are open i only go out when i need to get something you know yeah one of the things I needed to get was a video game, so I was in EB Games. Just for anyone who's paying attention, <laughs> yes. Uh, you know they they make them digitally these days. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. And here's the thing: so Outer Worlds, which I've wanted to play for ages, it's sixty dollars on the the store. But um, I saw it be a in sale. my email. I saw it in my email at EB Games for forty five, forty nine dollars, and I was like, man, that's eleven dollars cheaper. Money's tight at the moment, so I went and got the forty nine dollar one. Sue me. Uh, the next sale that's on the PlayStation Store, I bet it's cheaper than that. Yeah, probably. No, oh, well. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. The DDP. Though, that's what I'm saying. Though he's done the risk assessment. He's staying closed. Good. He's Good got for some him. brains. Yeah. Well, I'm, and that's what I'm into. I'm into like letting people do what they want, and hopefully, people do the right thing. You know, absolutely. Yeah. It gives a lot, it, but it involves giving a lot of people the benefit of the doubt, which is kind of hard. So, it, yeah, I don't think it is. I, I think that's where it comes down to, like whether you have a negative view of people in general or a positive view of people in general. And I try to have a positive view of people in general, even though people are fucking dumb most of the time. Yeah, figure that one out. Mm. Anyway, someone else doing the right thing. AEW, their social distance, they're taped up until May. Tony Khan says next week's episode is probably the best episode of wrestling TV in months. Just burying his own product. <laughs> <laughs> like everything we put out, you thought this week was good. It was trash. Is next AEW week. still putting out Dark in yeah. all this time? Dark, yeah, oh, God. yeah. Dark they filmed do. everything, man. Yeah, they filmed all the being the elite. They has filmed a lot of it. It's good that he has belief in his product, but he, like last week as well, when he was hyping up the Moxley Hager No Holds oh. Barred match, saying it was going to be the, the, the greatest empty arena match that we've ever seen. Like he actually hyped <laughs> it up as that. And I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was, it was really good. But I, I just, I liked Edge and Randy Orton though, and everyone disagreed with me apparently. So it was, that, that was okay. That was just long. That was just long. Yeah. But no, I I enjoyed the the Hager and and Mox match. Uh, I've I've mostly caught up on Dynamite. I'm a little behind. I haven't watched the end of this week, so I think I'm up to the main event. But when um, when everything gets back to normal, are we all going to miss these people like Pineapple Pete and Angel Adam Angels or whatever his fucking name was? And uh, I Justice Law, like these guys. The Jobber program. I like it. Do you think they should I like having bring Jobbers? It back? Like oh, when they should keep normal? Jobbers. Yeah. Yes, this yeah. is good wrestling TV. Yeah. You're building up Brody Lee. You're building a fucking hell. Yes, yes, this is wrestling. I want this. Because they were doing job, they were having jobber matches before when everything was normal, but I was like, oh, he's not as much. Yeah, right. was, yeah. Oh, you weren't seeing repeat people. So I'm going to gonna miss these people eventually. Yeah, I'm going, I'm into to, it. going to like them. That Engels guy. Yeah, he was actually the, good. <laughs> Jer- Jericho calling him Eagles and being like, oh, is it Angles? I've called him Eagles about three times so far. Oh, well, he can he, he can deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Jericho on commentary, man. He's just awesome. Fucking gold. Like when he has those little character moments where he's just like, I'm Chris Jericho. Like you offered me one of those AEW jackets, but I'm not going to wear it. Do you know how much this jacket cost? <laughs> I'm not taking this off for anybody. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, AEW is a delight. It's a delight. It's my weekly uh, escape. I enjoy it. I look forward to it. I'm going to start watching Dark again, I think, if I can. If we decide to stop watching these stupid fucking movies. (laughs) (laughs) We'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, But no, the the, the TNT tournament. How are you guys feeling about the brackets so far? I called it like 100%. Who's who's left? All right. So we got on the – sorry, go ahead, Mysterious. You can take it. Yeah, okay. So we got uh, Cody going up against Darby Allen. And the results from this week, you have uh, Dustin Rhodes, who managed to win and not, because uh, it, was, it was announced last week, but we didn't feel like mentioning, saying if if for some reason Dustin lost, he was going to retire. And what a stupid There was no way in hell it was going to happen. It was nice to get a little bit of extra eyes on it, but there was no way it was going to happen. So yeah, Dustin Rhodes is going to face Lance Archer. So 
there's a lot of ways they can go about this. Um, will we see double or nothing rematch, or do you think it would be Cody Archer? Cody Archer seems the most logical choice, and just because it's the logical choice, you know, it doesn't mean they shouldn't do it. And uh, it's pretty much the way that they have been booking AEW. It's like, let's not do a swerve. Like, whatever makes sense, let's fucking do it. So they should fucking do it. <laughs> yeah, I went I went Cody versus Archer in my predictions with Cody winning it because I figure Cody can't have the world title. He'll probably take the TNT title. But I'm switching to Archer. I think Archer wins the final. Uh, so Cody versus Allen, this is obviously a rematch from, what, like the first Dynamite? Yeah. Was it the first Dynamite no, or not, like the second? No, uh, Cody Guevara was Maybe the first second. Dynamite, but... Okay, yeah. so no, Cody Allen was from like Fight for the Fallen or one of those smaller shows, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, so it was pre-TV and they went time limit on that. Yeah. and it, Which is a match that people have forgotten about, but I thought it was brilliant fucking storytelling and it established the time limits matter and and I'm into it. And so Cody doesn't have a win over Derby. And, and so I'm really looking forward to this match and I think Cody gets the win here redeems himself and then we go cody versus archer and now i think archer wins and then cody the money's in the chase yeah like oh, there what is you a... think of cody in the back cave at the very start of the show <laughs> oh that was awesome i love the promos <laughs> that he's doing <laughs> mr into dr it. claw maybe super into it um i'm super murder hawks over yeah he's over as fuck right like uh, we can only go by twitter at the moment really yeah the, the, that's the closest thing you have to live reaction and Murderhawk is over the only way i see dustin getting the win is by dq if you have archer completely murder him but dustin advances to face cody and if you're going to do it that way then i could see them putting dustin as champion just to like, the very first you know is he wait? Is he retiring if he loses the tournament? No, or is it, he it, was, it was just for it was just, it was just for that. Yeah, unless okay. he says another video in the next few days after we've recorded this. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because if he was retiring, if he lost the tournament, then he has his retirement match against Cody. Yeah, but I yeah, that's not happening. Um, no, I think I think I think Cody puts over Archer in the fight. Like it's it's very AEW. This thing has been booked perfectly. Yeah. When you looked at the brackets, I knew straight away who was going through. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my pick is Archer to win. By the way, so I'm, yeah. I'm going. Cody. I, I hope he does, and I think he will. I'm a big Archer fan, mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah, he definitely proved uh, himself in the in the G1 and even leading up to the G1 last year. So yeah, he had a cracker of a year when yeah. he started getting some singles matches. Like, oh my god, this guy is actually pretty awesome. Yeah, and and like, how did I not know this? Because he's been around for a while. <laughs> yeah, a long while. Yeah. He's not new to the game at all. When he was tagging with, with uh, Davy Boy Jr., whatever his name is. Davy Boy yeah, Smith. Um, it, it was hard to really stand out in the tag team, I think, but uh, they gave him some singles matches, and it's like, wow. Yeah. What's with New Japan's tag division, man? Like, what? Uh, How can you be booked by former tag team legends and have such an awful tag let's team Let's not division? get into I that just, right now. I still don't get it. Yeah, yeah, no. no. <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's, let's continue then. Um, Cody's got his name back, so we may see... And new TNT champion Cody Rhodes. Yeah, so yeah, they w- announce it. Yeah, WWE let the trademark lapse uh, about six months ago, and he's picked it up. I don't see him immediately putting his name back on his last name back on. No. But well, he said he's been able to use it for the last six months or so. He's been saying he could use it whenever he wants. But like so the grace period or something, merchandise to- period, like like for for marketing and for merchandise. I think that was hmm. the last thing that he needed to get done. Yeah, yeah. It so never, never cool. stopped JR. Cool he owns his name, him, yeah. Cody Rhodes on commentary, so no. Yeah, but JR also calls Jungle Boy Jungle Jack Perry. No, yeah. no one cares. No. I'm waiting to start <laughs> calling Matt Hardy Jeff Hardy, even though he's the only one in the company. Yeah, did we talk about MJF's injury last week? No, we didn't, and I'm glad that we've left. Any, it anytime now. Mysterious tried to talk about a news thing, you just kept on saying, "No, we're not talking about that. We're here just to talk about the um." The firings. You kept lambasting the poor man. No, no. It was important that we talked just about the firing, so we didn't have yeah. time to talk about the extra things. So I'm glad we're but, actually talking about it now since we actually know what was going on. So Because I, yeah. I messaged you guys like, have you seen his tweets? I'm actually kind of concerned. Yeah. I was like, is he hurt? Because he, he only ever tweets in character. Yeah. But he was tweeting things like, oh, I'm really sorry that I, I can't perform for you guys. 
something's happened, it's getting worse. And I'm like, oh no, like that doesn't sound in character for MJF at all. Mm -hmm. And it was a hangnail. His horrible, debilitating hangnail injury he sustained while gambling and throwing money. gambling. (laughs) Yeah, throwing money. (laughs) This made me think of one particular tweet, and I'm just going to read it out right now. Good night, Hulkamaniacs and Jabroni Marks without a laugh. They don't know what a work is going to work, a work, a work is going to shoot, Marks. Uh, yeah. I just, I thought, it, it got me. He got me. He got me. He absolutely got me. He's the best in the game yep. because that's hilarious. That's so, he's such a troll. But it was because he doesn't tweet out of character and it felt out of character. And then there's also the issue of he hasn't had a match since Cody or he had a multi-man match at some point. But his last big match was Cody, and everyone was like, oh, so he's going to be next to to go up the card and face Mox, right? Because he beat Cody. Hmm. But there's been nothing. I just he don't just think gambled. his singles match with him in an empty arena would play very well. Just his wrestling style. is It's, it's boring, in my opinion, him having yes, a single match. he needs the crowd. And so yeah. AEW intelligently are booking him so that he doesn't have to wrestle when there's no crowd. I have absolute confidence in AEW at this point. Oh yeah, yeah, as do I. Yeah, just, just absolute. Even when they fuck up, they kind of steer away from the fuck ups, and it's, it's nice to see. <laughs> they, it's nice they to care, see. They listen. It's good when, yeah. yeah, they're not so settled in their ways that, like with Vince McMahon, you just no matter you can't jump up and down and complain. They ain't gonna listen to shit, but um. Yeah. This Hopefully is... we won't ever see uh, an AEW episode of Dark Side of the Ring. No. How's that for a segue? Yes. Yeah, no. Dark Side, I, I, I haven't seen um, When we finish tonight, I will be watching the, the Dino Bravo episode. Uh, feel free to, to, to tell talk about the episode. No, yeah. spoilers are fine. I'm still going to watch it. So it's, uh, does anyone know about the story before I talk about it? Or? All I know no, is... I've not yet watched. I think it's like a gambling debt and the Canadian mafia kill him. <laughs> Is that is that the, the gist of it? Kind of, yeah. So obviously he Dino Bravo was the booker in um his promotion before the WWF came along and they bought him out and they turned him into a foreign heel and he didn't enjoy it like he like Vince irritated him so much and then he kinda let his contract lapse and then but he kinda got used to all the money from being in the WWF and the only thing that was similar to that level of money at that time was organized crime and he became an enforcer for the mafia and yeah he got shot in the head and the body about 11 times oof yeah ouch gonna hurt that's yeah so it's still no coming back from that it's still a it's still an unsolved crime so that's oh you yeah. didn't need to give that bit away <laughs> But no, like, yeah, you can look that I was up. hoping for some closure. But yeah, no, so, honestly, just yeah, they a lot, a lot of it's in French as well. So they got his uh, his daughter and his partner, like they talked, and it was all all subtitles as well. So most of the guests as well. But yeah, it's just a very interesting. So like one of the original people that Visit Man kind of um, yeah, took it, like everything that everyone loved about him because he was essentially the Canadian Hulk Hogan for a time. So. Wow, I'm how gonna did, have to watch that. I'll probably watch that tonight. It's it's it was actually really interesting, and I was worried that um, when they had a couple of the guests who were just speaking in French, I was worried it was going to take away from the atmosphere. But that the dark side of the ring crew are just such good documentary makers that that's that's yeah. racist. What? Like, no. what, what are you going against the French? Oh, oh, it's like, this is French. It's going to ruin it. You, no, you were the racist one last week, Greg. When you have a foreign <laughs> film, kind of like just doing the subtitle thing, I thought that would ruin the, the atmosphere of it all. <laughs> Hang on, I wasn't the racist one last week. It was Mysterious who said that the two black guys looked alike. I did not that say that. Actor. I did not yeah, say you that. Thought it was the, you thought it was the same actor, dude. I thought because I saw that IMDb credits. And now and now it's the French oh my as gosh. well. Pretty soon we're going to talk about this movie and you're going to agree with the guy that called the two women Orientals. I thought you were going to say the, the weakest sex bit. <laughs> <laughs> How about I stick oh, player in the movie just to be safe? Obviously, that's, that's, yeah. <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that shortly. First, we, get, we do Dark Side of the Ring, though. Uh, it's apparently the highest rated series in Vice TV history. So, you know. Happy for them. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So they're looking to do 
much, much more. So they're going to expand the franchise into new areas. Uh, coming next year, Light Side of the Ring. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to run out of some of these more notorious ones. So. Yeah. Um, hopefully, you know, maybe it would be nice to see a more positive one. But Light Side of the Ring, that's just the wrestlers, that other show that was on SPS. Have you, did you see any of the wrestlers? Yeah, no, I, I, I loved the wrestlers. I enjoyed that. Yeah, there was the one about the um, <coughs> oh, where were they? Were they was it Puerto Rico and like and they have the the crazy dresses that no, they wrestled. I only saw about half the episodes. Ooh. Yeah, and there was like the Me- oh, I just bumped my microphone. There was the the luchadors in Mexico that wrestle literally on the street. Yeah, that episode had uh, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon in it. Before, so good. Way before AEW. People should check out The Wrestlers if it's still on SBS On Demand. Yeah, it still uh, is. Yeah. Well, it, it was yeah. like as of a month ago when I, when I watched that episode. But yeah, no, I'm definitely looking forward to more because like you said, Mysterious, they're very good documentarians. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Uh, and something that a lot of people have been looking forward to more of is Benny and the Refs quizzes he's the quiz master again ladies and gentlemen i should have said that at the top of the episode i should have introduced you as the quiz master yeah, but I, was I, gonna, I was gonna make my uh my name for the chat the quiz master but then i thought i'd go with glorious venus instead Glor- yeah, Gloria the, the quiz venus. master is back by the glorious venus by popular yes. demand it is actually a few people actually messaged us which is great to see so keep at it guys yeah, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we like getting messages in these times. I haven't seen another human in weeks. Well, that's There's only right. one. So I've got five questions, and only one of them is wrestling related. But but there is a theme here. Okay. And uh, we, is, is it, it Aztec mummies? No, no. Damn. Are we? Have you got the music? Is the music in the background, Greg? Uh, let's, let's say it is. Let me cue up the music. Boom. Let's do this. All right. So I don't have a buzz in, so you can just do do buzz. All right. Okay. Is that all right? That's all right. fine. So, all right, I'm okay with that. I, think, I feel like the buzz-ins is half of the appeal for people, but let's do it. All yeah. right. All right. So the theme of this is Corey because... I've got a buzz-in. Hang on. What? I've got a buzz-in. Uh, we have to come up with the uh, most absurd thing that we can think of that cures coronavirus. Oh, God. Just, just to make sure the Susan takes the video minutes. down. No, we've got to make sure Susan takes the video. Fine. No buzz then. Yeah, I thought that was entertaining. Anyway, so, so Corey, he's our, our listener, my number one um, person that I like that listens to the podcast, <laughs> Corey on Twitter. Wow. So this is the Corey quiz. So this one's for him. Mm-hmm. The Corey quiz. So, Are we uh, talking about people named Corey? Yes. So hopefully he's playing along at home. So question one. Okay. Corey Taylor is the singer of which two major American bands? Bzz. American bands. Bzz. Yes, great. It's, uh, it's Slipknot. Yes, that's one. And fuck. Um, oh, man. I know it. I know it, but I don't know it. <laughs> uh, is it Stone Sour? Yes, that that's it? correct. Yay! <laughs> Have you heard of any of these bands? I'm like, it sounds wrong. I, yeah, I know Slipknot. I, I like spit yeah. it out and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Nice word. Could you have got there, Mysterious, if you'd... Uh... I would have remembered Slipknot. I wouldn't have remembered the other one. Okay. All, right. All those years of reading AP magazine have paid off. <laughs> here's, here's the one wrestling-related rela- question. Who was Corey Graves' last match against? Or whoever can get closest to their last opponent? Ooh. So 2014 is when he uh, retired from in-ring competition. In NXT, too. Yeah. Uh, bzz- yes, Greg? I want to say Park, uh, at the time, Adrian Neville. It wasn't his last one, but if, uh, uh, if Mysterious can't can't get closer to the last, then you'll get the point. Okay. So let's have a look at his matches. One, uh, two, three. Can hear you type it, Mysterious. Don't look up cage match. I am not looking up cage match. Um, I'm on to you, buddy. How about Sammy? I'm just trying to think around about that time. Yes, you clo- you got your betting by one match. One match? Okay, so, so it's not the last one. Okay. His fifth last match was a singles against Sami Zayn. Okay. And his sixth last match was uh, Neville. All right. But his fourth yeah. last match was a was a tag that had um, Sami Zayn in it. So, but but his very last match against Tr- Tr- Troy McLean. Troy McLean. Who? <laughs> <laughs> Which was at WrestleMania Access 2014. Oh. Oh come on! That wasn't aired. You can't count that. What was his last televised match? 
Uh, well, there was a Solomon Crow was a match. The last televised one was Sami Zayn and the Usos versus Corey Graves and the Ascension. Yeah, so uh, that was. Really, a, I don't feel like I got the point there. Give it to Mysterious. No, you got the point. Okay. You got the point. I I pay that. That's a point. All right. Yeah. I'm, I'm the quiz master now. <laughs> <laughs> I am the quiz master. <laughs> okay. What's the let's have a look here? Um. Okay. Corey Feldman voiced a Ninja Turtle in the live action uh, number one and three. You know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one and three. Which which turtle did Corey Feldman voice? I should really uh, write these questions out better. Greg. Michelangelo. Bom bom. Damn. Mysterious. Donatello. That's the one. That, that's the one that you'd think. It's like that's the personality yeah. trait. Well, he's he's the one that seems most likely to have been abused as a child. So. <laughs> oh, oh god. I, uh, I, 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 this is public news, people. Donatello. Yes, that's correct. Did yes. you know that? Or really? That, yes. I was one in four guess. Yes. Yeah, it's one in four. I took a stab. I was like, if I just if I just buzz as quick as possible, say one of the names, I got one in four chance. Uh, okay. oh, oh, well, one, one, in five, lead. One, in, one in five if we say Venus as well, but I don't know if we include Venus in that. Yeah. You shut the fuck up right now. <laughs> that's me. That's me. I'm Glory of Venus. Okay, this is another easy one. Should be. Who was the other Corey in the Lost Boys with Corey Feldman? Bzz, Corey Haim. Yes. Oh, it's, well it's all even now. Well done. Okay, now this, my 80s. this could be a hard one here. This is to win it. Corey in the House yeah. is a Disney show that ran for two seasons oh. and 34 oh. episodes from 2007 to 2008. It was a spin off to what popular Disney show? Bzz. That's so Raven. Fuck off. <laughs> I actually <laughs> knew that. I actually knew that. Well done. Well Not done. every week, baby. <laughs> I actually knew that because I love that Sir Raven. Uh, Corey in the house, trash. That Sir Raven, that's my shit. Yeah, I didn't realize Corey in the house was a show, but I, I've definitely oh, seen yeah. that Sir Raven back in the day. You know who should have gotten a show? Uh, Roger from Sister Sister. I don't know if I know what Sister Sister is. Tia and Tamara, and, and, and they were always like, "Go home, Roger." Because <laughs> that's a Disney sitcom as well. I don't know if it was Disney. It might have been Nickelodeon. Oh, okay. Might have been. Nick- I was more of a Nickelodeon kid than a Disney kid. Right. Like even when it came to to cartoons and shit, like Rocket Power over Recess every day. Oh, I week. loved Recess. No, I, I have to. I loved it. Recess yeah. too. I bought Rocket so Power old, over Recess. What the hell, you guys are talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm closer to you in age than Mysterious. Rocket Power is that like Blast Off? No, Blast Off was dope though. No, but but Rocket Power was the one where you know woogity woogity and they would like rode their skateboards and they surfed and shit. Was this a cartoon or live action? Yeah, yeah, yeah. cartoon. Uh, cartoon. I, I, I might have to see as a still for me to know what this is. I'm sure if I sent you a picture of the cast, you'd you'd know it. Yeah, okay. They were in Hawaii, I think, or were they in California? No, I'm pretty sure they were in Hawaii. So that's the quiz. Let us know at home how you went, and if uh, if Corey <laughs> Grutchy or whatever his surname is. I want to know how he's your favourite when we, we don't have favourite listeners by the way but apparently you do and he's your favourite but you don't even know how to say his fucking name I, I love that he replies to the tweet when the last episode went out and he's like oh is there a quiz and Mysterious is just like <laughs> oh yes yes there will be next one it's like oh now I've got to do it because Mysterious has just told him that there's going to be a quiz <laughs> even though it's I not get, his responsibility to make the quiz I, I get messages in my inbox from people who like the quiz and, yeah. and those people are actually watching uh, some old Ring of Honor at the moment so this next thing uh, goes out to them if you like quizzes mm. right and you like old Ring of Honor Ring of Honor are doing a quiz night on Zoom Nice. Check that out. I don't know when it's happening. Thursday the 30th, so next week, I think. Um, I, I don't know what that translates to for us. It'll be like a Friday morning because mm-hmm. it's a Thursday night in America. So Friday morning for us at some time during the day. If you're at home, uh, you know, if you're not essential, check it out. Uh, Ring of Honor doing a quiz night for about their old school. And apparently the, some of the wrestlers are going to be on the Zoom. So You've got to tell me who nice. these listeners are that love the quiz so much. Never. Oh, my God. I will not betray my sources. They like their yeah. anonymity, Ben. Like, just just tweet at me. <laughs> well, if they if they wanted to, uh, they would. Yes, yeah, but they don't. They might be intimidated so... by Benny and the refs. Who knows? <laughs> they might be Seth Rollins. Yeah. 
You don't know. Yeah, I'm sure. Is it time might to move Jimmy on Havoc. to our wrestling Jimmy Havoc review? Jimmy Havoc, of the quiz. You heard it here first. Jimmy Havoc. That's, uh... If, now if Jimmy Havoc is listening to this, he's just like, What? <laughs> I never fucking messaged you, cunt! <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, so yeah, now that we've done the quiz, let's do the other stupid Benny and the Refs suggestion. This fucking movie. Wrestling Women versus the Aztec Mummy from 1964. <laughs> On IMDb, it has a rating of 4.0 out of 282 votes. Uh, the, is that out of 10? Yeah, out of 10. A 4 out of 10. This is Okay, those I, people are wrong. Yeah. Those people are wrong. This movie is a solid 7. <laughs> I honestly did not think you were going to say that. No, neither did I. It's better than the main event. It's, it's 100% yes, better it's than 100% the main event. Yeah, it's 100% better but, than the main event, but I don't know if that's saying much. So this is Look, a, we've stepped up from last week. We've stepped up from last week. Yes. Black so, and white Mexican horror film, which is pretty light on the horror until the actual mummy turns up, which I found quite... Disturbing. What did you think of the it's mummy in the last thing? five minutes? And it terrified the shit out of me because I was not expecting it. <laughs> yeah, it looked disgusting. Yeah, it was, it was great. I was into it. <laughs> I was serious. What did you think of the mummy itself? I thought the movie was trash, but it lost it, it. It it lost me, and then it got me back, and then it lost me, and then it got me back in the last five with the mummy. So, you know. the mummy that turns How- into a bat, like, <laughs> and then a spider, vampire mummy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I was waiting for it to turn into the Yeti. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> it's amazing how much exposition a movie can have and still make you confused as what the fuck's going on. Because let me tell you, <laughs> <laughs> I I spent the first twenty five minutes of the movie being like, "Who the fuck is the Black Dragon?" They just mentioned his name casually like twenty times, but no one ever explained who the fuck this guy was. What the hell's going on here? Who's the Black Dragon? Why is he doing this? What are his motivations? I need to know the villain to care about a story. Yeah, everyone just keeps on throwing character names out without actually pointing out <laughs> who they are. Everyone's just talking about all these people. When like, uh, who's that made me the wonder, professor? Which one's Professor Charlie or whoever you were talking yeah. about here? It made me wonder, is this part of a series? Yeah, so there was three movies prior okay. to this and then... Uh, Three movies all filmed within one year, 1957. They all came out. And here we are, 1964, they decided to, to come back and do another one. So, And this is dubbed into, dubbed into English. I don't mind cheesy black and white movies dubbed into English. Um, I love the horror font at the start of the movie. Just like it's just <laughs> dripping like blood. And the music, anytime like something spooky is going on, that, that old... Hammer horror kind of yeah vibe, you know. The, I'm not the, into it. I love the score to this movie. I think we should have it throughout this entire podcast. See, it's the the language of movies from that time, and like mm-hmm. the, you know, you can call me uncultured all you want, but if I go back and watch Casablanca, I'm like, eh, just because the language of the movie it's just so different to the language of movies now. And yes, movies are dumbed down, and it's all mainstream popcorn trash but you know what i like to turn my brain off and watch superheroes punch things sue me uh it's you know uh, this was entertaining though in bits i i I just don't like old movies too much that said 13 year old greg watching uh, wcw on tcm if this came on straight after i'd be like i'll watch this (laughs) Uh, what did you think of the actual wrestling a lot of snapmares so see that's what they got me back they got me back. So I was like, this movie's trash. This movie's trash. I remember I messaged you. I was like, uh, yeah, we're going to record straight after I watch this trash movie. And you did the shocked face because I said it was trash. But right after I sent that message was the actual wrestling match. So in the middle of the movie, <laughs> there's a full wrestling match for 15 minutes. Yeah. And it was dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was actually really I was so into it. You got these two, the two women wrestlers that were like the main, like the protagonists, the women wrestlers versus the mummy, right? So them versus these two judo girls. And so it was like a classic racist trope um, character. And they brought them in. And like, there was someone in the crowd who literally called them Orientals. And I was like, wow. But yeah. the match was great. Yeah, what about before I, the I match? I enjoyed it. The, you've got the people outside reading the poster and like translating the poster from Spanish and they're saying, oh, witness the battle of the weaker sex for the whoever's going to win the, the codex. <laughs> so, so the whole plot so of the movie bad. is, so there was treasure in a pyramid and they had yep. to find the, the codex so they could decipher it and to find out where it is. So the, the black dragon is like the, 
I, was he the head of like a criminal empire of um I guess you know, <laughs> and then you got the, the the baby faces are the, these other two women and they're friends with Charlotte and the professor and she was she was being hypnotized by this guy <laughs> With a fucking syringe, he's like, <laughs> he's like, with, with with just a few stabs of this syringe, she will succumb to my hypnotic powers. That's not hypnotism, dude. Yeah, I thought she was getting turned into a, a zombie because then he like, was what watching the fuck? through the TV and talking to her through the camera or something. Then he got by putting a hat with a camera in it, <laughs> like Homer Simpson style. Oh god. <laughs> Yo, I'm revising it. This is a nine out of ten. <laughs> I love this movie. It was, it was just a short, nice, nice ninety minute movie on YouTube. And in good yeah. quality as well. It wasn't grainy. <laughs> but honestly, you know what? Mm. I think that if you had a weekly wrestling show that was just a random story, nothing connected, no need for long form storytelling. If you just put out a movie a week as a wrestling TV show where you have some cockamamie plot like this <laughs> that results in a wrestling match to get the artifact. I would fucking watch that show. I would watch the shit out of that show. It, even if it had match, like this match was very old school. It was arm drags, headlock takedown. Like there was the flying head scissors. Yeah. Well, yeah. I didn't expect to see but, that. But it was, it was a 1960s wrestling match. You know, it was not what you see today, but it was fucking exciting because of the story of the movie i've turned around i'm just talking about it now i'm realizing i actually love it this <laughs> and i would like to see more wrestling it respects like wrestling that's the refreshing thing so in in the midst this whole bonkers story plot it actually respects except that they treat it as real yeah, but in the 60s i forgave yeah them. yeah but it was uh it was nice. Yeah. I enjoyed I enjoyed it. It was good. I <laughs> changed my mind. A short match at the start of the film, and then like the girls they win their match and they come backstage and they're in their locker room and they're like what the, like, oh man, I thought they really uh, were gonna kill us back there or <laughs> something to them. <laughs> thought, they, thought they had us, thought we're gonna be didn't think we we're gonna make it through that. It's like okay, wrestling is real in the context of this film. So that's that's yeah. nice. Like yeah, completely well, like they did it, establish it, it earlier. It was very yeah. clear, yeah. So it was clear. Not like yeah, I don't know, but it was it was it was good. Actually, yeah, no, I'm revising my initial statement. I call it trash because it was trash. It was like at points it was so bad it's good, like the hypnotizing, thing, right? <laughs> like that's that's so cheesy. Who injected you? But, <laughs> but I enjoyed it uh, overall. And the mummy thing was uh, like like I said, the last five minutes actually genuinely terrified me. When, when the movie finished, it just like crashed to to credits. I'm like. But it's at the end. I'm like, what the fuck? Did, what, what did I just miss? I had to rewatch what you watched the last the minute. It goes to the end. And then because we were watching it on YouTube and I'll put the link in the video description, uh, in the podcast description. Um, it went straight to the next one, which was robot versus. The mummy. So I just saw the credits and I'm like, we have to go record, but it was robot versus the Aztec mummy. And I'm like, what the fuck? Now there's a robot? Like, I want to watch this. Is the Black Dragon still involved? I have so many questions. Uh, well, that took place so, beforehand, so... I'd... Yeah, I well, I want to watch this robot. about everybody as if you knew who they were, so I'm guessing maybe the Black Dragon's in the previous one. But the, uh, the no, the wrestling the wrestling was great. Um, that was where they really won me over. And they, then again, like I said, in the last five minutes, um, when they're in the tomb and stuff. But the wrestling was great. Yeah. That woman just weird. like screaming. She's been chained up because the mummy was going to sacrifice her or something. Mm-hmm. And all the, the, the buddies turn up to help. And they're like, and she's like, can you guys get me out of here? And they're just all too scared of the, <laughs> of the Yeti changing into all these the, different. The dubbing, the dubbing is really bad. I'll say that as well. Like whenever you get these old black and white movies and they dub over yeah. it and you hear the awful fight scenes and the, the fight scenes is the other thing. Was they were so bad. What a judo chop! So bad. Yeah. Everyone's just getting shot yeah. in the head. <laughs> and just over over exaggerated sound effects, like you know the. Everyone sounds like that smashing um, planks of wood against something. Yeah, yeah, but no, it was. I, I actually would recommend people watch it for a bit of a laugh if you're at home, isolated, you got nothing to do. Uh, it's it's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. go through enjoy- all four it- films, I reckon. I was a bit hesitant, but it is is actually really enjoyable. So, have you got another trash movie for us to watch that's wrestling related? Uh, well, I picked two already now. So, if you guys have any suggestions, and 
What do you what do you two reckon? Well, the only two that come to mind right now because they're on my mind because of the recent things was WrestleMania, which is John <laughs> Morris and wrestling. It doesn't have to be a trash wrestling movie. We can pick a good one. As long as it's um And Ready to Rumble. Ready to Rumble. Is that streaming anywhere? I don't know. Let's uh let's have a look. Or ready to rumble stream. I'll have a look in uh... I think I've seen it on stand, but that was a while ago. Mm. So I do recommend the Just Watch app where you can uh put in a movie and it brings up all the different um streaming or renting services. Oh that's cool. And it tells you how much they are on, on every platform. It's available to rent and buy on Google Play and Apple and Microsoft and YouTube. So no, no streaming services have it. Uh, I'll try to find... Which is unfortunate. I'll find something that's streaming or free on YouTube or somewhere. Yeah, and I mean, I'll... Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler is another option, obviously. I'll, but I think everyone's I'm going to throw that, this right? one out there. Nacho Libre. Ooh, okay. I love I've, that I've never seen it. Get that corn out of my face. <laughs> I what are, what's that new one? Um the Peanut Butter Falcon. I haven't seen that. Yes, yet. I actually Peanut Butter Falcon. Yeah, it's uh, no Shia idea. LaBeouf and it's got appearances with Mick Foley and a couple other wrestlers. And so that's about uh, a guy with down syndrome yeah. and he runs away from home to be a pro wrestler. Shia helps take him to a Sounds wrestling good. camp, yeah. Well, we'll figure it out this week and uh, we'll tweet it out. Where can people find those tweets, guys? At Asia Mania Pod on Twitter. Mysterious? At Miss Mysterious with 107i. Pretty much anywhere you can think of, uh, except for Station Head. I will get on it, Greg. How about yourself? Get on it, motherfucker! <laughs> I'm going live right now after this as I uh, edit the podcast together, but I am Greg Does Radio on Station Head. I'm Greg Does Tweets on Twitter, Greg Does Graham on Instagram. We collectively are the B Plus Wrestle on Twitter because wrestling wouldn't fit the B Plus Wrestling everywhere else. Like, share, subscribe, five star review if you like what we do. And thank you so much for listening. Why mess with us?